In the soggy shadow of Samson and Goliath, the people of East Belfast were still digesting the Paisley documentary today. In the cafe of the Skeno Centre on the Newtonards Road, the allegations of a party heave against a man who dominated the political landscape was a big topic of conversation. I wouldn't say it's sour grapes on behalf of the family, but you know, it clearly had to go, I think. I really believe he was sincere in all he did, even if I didn't agree with him in his way of doing it. Big mistake, because it can do no good, can't do any cause for the DUP, and certainly won't. I think it backfired on him. For his traditional electorate, it will have been a difficult watch. Irene Brown, speaking here in a personal capacity, has been a member of the DUP and the Martyrs Memorial Church for more than four decades. My first reaction was total sadness, and then it was bewilderment. And today it's disappointment. Um, the church will go on because it's global. The DUP will go on. And I don't think that interview has diminished the popularity of the DUP in any one way. I don't think the programme, in all honesty, did Baroness Paisley and Lord Vanside any favours. The Reverend Ian Paisley's public life spanned the decades from street protest to peace process. But if doing the documentary was to secure his legacy as the man who did the deal with Sinn Féin, then some commentators believe his refusal to accept some responsibility for what happened over those years has been counterproductive. There was still that sense that nothing had changed for him. And I think the people who had revised their opinion in 2007 have re-revised it. I think his legacy now is if it's like King Lear ranting at a world he no longer controls or and in many ways doesn't even understand anymore. When the history of this period is written, Ian Paisley will have a huge part in it. A colourful and controversial character and, after this latest intervention, one about which it's unlikely there'll be much consensus. Conor McCauley, BBC Newsline.